Insights with Terry Coots, a weekly look through the eyes of predictive astrologer Terry Coots. Here's Terry. Hi, everyone. This is Terry, and you're listening to Insights with Terry Coots. Thank you for joining me. We are going to be discussing the week of November the 20th through the 26th, 2022. We are still in a Scorpio sun sign. Now that's only going to be till the middle of this week. So that shifts to Sagittarius on the 23rd. What does that mean? Well, that heavy, deep transformational energy of Scorpio will move to the optimistic, um, never say die, philosophy, psychiatric type of energy. Why is this happening? What's happening? That the questions, the the why of life in Sagittarius. So that is where the predominance of the inform of the energy is going to be. And that is going to challenge us to do some when I say soul searching, I don't mean deep, not like not like Scorpio. Uh, more how do I have fun? What, 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 is the, what is the thing of life that is fun? So it's more of a light-hearted, energetic type of an energy field. Still the quest, though. It, we're still in the quest. So we've got that until the 23rd, as I said. And then Mercury, the plan of the mind, how we think, how we communicate, that is as well still in Scorpio. That's going to change on the 25th. That's the end of the week, Friday. And always when these planets shift, there's a shift in us. So that change, kind of like taking a big logging truck and you're going forward, then you have to stop. <laughs> and then you have to put it in reverse. So there's a big shift, right, in energy. So again, it, that's the mind. Now, it is a bit of a challenge, I'm going to discuss this, but it's a bit of a challenging position for Mercury to be in Sagittarius because Mercury is that want to get down to the nitty gritty, to think, to understand. And it's uncomfortable in Sagittarius because Sagittarius says, well, you know, let's, let's look at life through a broader lens rather than the nitty-gritty. So they're going to fight with each other. One wants the big picture and one wants to get down to the little nuts and bolts of it. So uh, because they're going to be arguing with each other for a bit until at least um, I would say the end of, you'll feel it until the end of December very likely and then it shifts again. But uh, just be prepared for that. You're going to be back and forth, wanting to look at the big picture, wanting to look at the little picture, wanting to get the details, not wanting to get the details. Why do you get stuck in the details kind of thing? So we're just going to have to look at it and for what it is, when it is, and have a discussion with ourselves. What do you want here? Because you're going to be back and forth. And Venus, the planet of love and beauty and attraction, that's in Sagittarius. So we're going to be very attracted to adventure, uh, to maybe doing something different, to uh, happy kind of things, trying to understand why things are happening and try to understand uh, why did that person say that? What's, what's motivating that person to say that? I love uh, the psychiatric part of this flavor uh, when it offers it to us. I like to understand the philosophy of a person. I don't have to agree with them to want to understand where they're coming from. And that's this kind of an energy to be able to hear another person's viewpoint and try to understand how they got there. What, what moved them to think this way? Now, because I work with animals so much, that's a natural way of being for me. That's, it's not foreign. It's a, uh, when you work with animals, they can't sit there and have a discussion with their little hands on their hips, right? You have to try to figure out what is that body communicating to me? What does that mean when the dog does this? Are, are they, what, it, what is going through their mind? What is natural? What's genetic? What is intuitive? What is instinct? So you try to separate all of that to understand the situation. This will be asked to do with people which is much more complicated. <laughs> Animals don't lie. They don't lie to themselves and they don't lie to uh, the world. Uh, they may try to hide things, but that doesn't mean that they're, they're lying about it. Whereas humans, it's a little different. They can be in denial uh, quite strongly. So it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I had a woman come to have her dog trained and she came because her dog had bitten badly a number of other dogs. 
well, she was walking her dog. And when she came, um, she was arriving at the same time another client was leaving. And I had my back turned and the other client went with her little four-month-old puppy up to the woman with the aggressive dog and said, does your dog bite? And that woman said no. And she went to let her puppy go near that other dog and I was just about to throw myself on her. And uh, the dog lunged and she was able to grab her dog back, thank God. But I'm standing there gobsmacked, right? Just gobsmacked because that woman knew that her dog bit, yet she let that other woman now, trying to understand that mindset, do, is it because she was in denial that she thinks her dog is wonderful and wouldn't hurt a puppy? Um, I, I, I'll never understand humans. I, it, this isn't about judgment. This is about not understanding. I will never understand where that came from. Even after asking for an explanation from her, I still couldn't follow her train of thinking. And that's what this is. This energy is a need to try to understand uh, where it's all coming from. What what is what what's going on here underneath the surface, so that I can understand the person in the mirror, or I can understand the person's uh, reflection. Maybe they're projecting uh, their stuff on me. And how do you understand it? And how do you cope with it? And how do you deal with it in a positive way? That's what's going to be offered to us, but with a very positive energy on the side, which is nice. We need positive energy. And then Mars, that's our passion planet. That's the planet that offers us the opportunity to, um, to be enthused about something, to be energetic about a subject. That's still in Gemini, and so that makes us need to meet other people, to need to want to maybe meet strangers and hear a different story from another person, to maybe go outside of a certain uh, type of book that you normally read and go to another one. So it is an energy field that we like to be interested and interesting. So we get to use that. Now our big planets, Jupiter and Uranus and Neptune, are all going retrograde. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that just, the, the, they're big planets. They're called generational planets. So they, they might take 80 years to change a cycle to 250 years to change a cycle. So it's not a small, quick event. And Jupiter's the planet of, uh, actually it's the ruling planet of Sagittarius. So when you have that going backwards, we're going to have some, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And then Uranus is the planet of expansion, and that going retrograde and and in Taurus, which means you know some stubbornness can can evolve and not to our um, not to our advantage. So if, don't mind me dipping my toe in here. Trump throwing his hat in the ring for presidential candidate again would be typical of this kind of an energy stubbornness. I don't 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 um, I want to expand my life, but don't confuse me with the facts. It's that kind of an energy. And then Neptune going retrograde in Pisces is the same type supporting that, which is, I don't confuse me with facts. <laughs> I think what I think, I do what I do, and I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear anything other than lies to myself. So Neptune can be very difficult at times in this energy field because it, it lies to us ourselves. It, it's just a it's an energy field that would contribute to us being in denial, like the woman with the dog. No, he doesn't bite. He'll be good with your puppy. She knew he wasn't, but she took a chance. I guess so. <laughs> now, the beginning of the week, uh, if you have male parts, <laughs> there will be male parts that are vulnerable. So if you um, have any troubles with your prostate or any male parts, it's a vulnerable vulnerable time for that. So just keep care of those male parts. <laughs> Make sure they're all functioning and doing good um, because it, that's a that's a weak part at the beginning of the week. Towards the middle of the week, we may, if we're vulnerable or uh, in that particular time frame, we may have trouble with our liver. So if you have liver issues, it could compound that. So just eat foods that are compatible with happy liver and try not to drink because happy livers don't like alcohol. And our hips, the thighs, the hip joint, the sacrum, the tailbone, the, the muscles all around the hips, that lumbar, sorry, lumbar 
uh, vertebrae and the muscles around the lumbar, uh, you, those are going to be very weak towards the middle to the end of this week. So take care, you know, watch how you lift things. If you have difficulties with your pelvis or your hips, you're gonna, you're gonna suffer a bit. Um, what can you do proactively? Maybe stay away from in inflammating foods. Um, just be proactive because it could be kind of not so nice. And towards the end of the week, that can migrate into joints. So if you have sore knees, joints, that if you have difficulty in your vertebrae, the backbone, your spine, and that's going to superimpose some difficulties there. The patella, even the ligaments could act up. So this isn't a great skeletal time for our muscles and our bones around our, our joints that we need it. So I'm prepared. I know that this is going to probably attack me in the knees. It usually does at this time. So I got my braces all washed and ready and dried and waiting for me. And I'm not going to wait till I get injured. If I see the micro little thing that could give me any grief with that, on go the braces. So don't take a chance. This, isn't, this is not the time for you to take a chance. Towards the end of the week, too, optimism might... Uh, increase. So uh, that dark, heavy stuff of, of Scorpio that we're trying to move past and move out of, hopefully, fingers crossed, will be a little bit more behind us in that, that higher energy, that higher frequency, that more esoteric frequency of Sagittarius uh, towards like Thursday, uh, the moon goes into Sagittarius, combining with it in Venus and moving uh, from Scorpio in Mercury to Sagittarius. It's a lighter energy field, so take advantage of it. We deserve it. We do. We've been we've been under the gun there for for a little bit. We'll be looking for justification. Uh, that's the, that's that kind of an energy. Why am I here? Uh, what do I contribute? Uh, I need a goal. I need a goal. Uh, what's my mission? Uh, if somebody asks me, what's my philosophy? What's the meaning of life? All of those questions can come to our mind, and we do need to we do need to address something like that. Just just looking at it, just saying here, Mercury and Sagittarius has some contrasting energies, and I just want to touch on that. As I said a little earlier, that I was going to, Mercury rules the rational mind, the logical processes, uh, the way we tend to learn. And it corresponds with how we deal with daily life tasks, how to solve a problem, how do we solve problems, how do we communicate, how do we accept communications, how do we make decisions that require some discernment on our part. And I've seen people make some pretty bad decisions. I've been part of that. Mercury's transits inform us of the shifts in our perception of reality. So our way of thinking our way of communicating, putting together the information that we gather from our environment. I watch the animals do this all the time, how they put that together, how they uh, can use ourselves against ourselves if we're not careful. All of that's going to be in play right now. Mercury traditionally is considered, when it's in Sagittarius, debilitated. And that's the, that's the term that they use, astrologers. And... Mercury, because it's about the details, because it's about, as I said earlier, the nitty gritty, the picky, 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 and Sagittarius is all about the big picture. Let's not get confused with the little stuff. Let's get the big picture. So they kind of argue with each other. Mercury is about inductive reasoning. It's the left brain hemisphere. Sagittarius is about deductive reasoning, the right brain hemisphere. Those are two very contrasting tendencies, but it, it, it creates a tension by this contrast, and that can ignite our creativity if we allow it. It can inspire us to expand our mental horizons. So there's great opportunity here. We may miss out on some details if we're too much in Sagittarius and that may end up stimulating our capacity for unconventional problem solving which might not be a bad thing it could be <laughs> if we're idiots uh, but let's not follow idiots and call them out for what they are how they're thinking that's foolish right 
you're not thinking straight. We may have to call them out. But it, it's an opportunity to put that into play unconventional problem solving and possibly come up with a new answer and generate new learning opportunities. So there's a big, big opportunity in that. And Mercury entering Sagittarius offers that enthusiastic communication and thinking the enthusiasm of Sagittarius. So during the journey of Mercury through Sagittarius, which is uh, about three more weeks, our communication and thinking are likely to be more expansive and more enthusiastic. I am firmly hoping that our leaders will grasp this to maybe problem solve the strike uh, with our educational support workers to come up with a better solution that's outside the box. We can feel an increased mental restlessness with this. And, and I, I have already felt it. I tend to stay up a little later at night because I'm thinking or I'm involved in some kind of thinking thing. And I start to recognize it and try to get myself in an unthinking place. Maybe a boring book or a self-help, something that's not too intriguing to get myself sleepy. So you might have some sleep issues if you're thinking too much. And we could tend to get distracted a little easier than we normally do during this time. We could dwell more on usual big future plans and ideals and aspirations, which wouldn't be a bad thing if you want to look at the big picture and make some goals because Sagittarius is all about our mission, our goals. What's the meaning of life? So this is really good to put into play, even if it's a, a little thing in a big way in your life. Um, looking, looking at my furnace, I was able to look at the big picture and then put in the furnace. So it's a little event in, in human history. <laughs> but to me, it was a pretty big thing to look ahead and say, do I want to wait till the last minute? And I can't get a, a person in in the middle of winter. Look at the big picture. What's what's the cost? What, you know, what if you get three weeks more out of your furnace as opposed to an emergency, what have you traded? So looking at the big picture in a, in a little way. There is a tendency with this to be dogmatic, maybe a little arrogant. Sagittarius offers arrogance here and impose our beliefs and worldview on others and not being, not being mindful of it. So we need to be mindful of are we pushing our stuff on others? I can be very opinionated <laughs> as some of my friends are too. Um, but I don't want to stick that on somebody else. I have to be mindful of it during this particular time. And so do you. I do get people where I feel I'm not having a conversation. I'm being lectured. Um, so we have, to, we have to look at that. Both Mercury and Sagittarius are associated with travel. Mercury is Sagittarius, respectively. Now, usually it's short-term or it's short-distance travel. And then sometimes Sagittarius likes long-term and long-distance travel. So we have to look at that. This is a great time to maybe, uh, if you were a travel kind of person, to book a trip or to take advantage of an opportunity that comes in. Um, I'm not sure that, honestly, the time is right for that with everything that's going on, but only you can tell. And people will need an adventure and certain people more than others that have Sagittarius in their birth charts will need an adventure. Go do a happy thing. Somebody was telling me that they went to Sloan's on the weekend and I didn't even know Sloan's offered all that. And it sure did sound good. And I thought maybe I'll have an adventure too. So this transit could inspire us to move around um, in whatever way is available to us at this moment to explore different settings, different cultures if you want to, different foods, world views, environment, to enrich our knowledge and understanding of life. Um, and maybe this would be through direct experience. It might be just something we want to experience. The, the, um, the carousel of nations that we have here in Windsor, if it was happening during this time, maybe we'd be more likely to go and see the dress, see what they're wearing, see how it feels to be in that culture, uh, to be us most into it. So there's other ways. There's National Geographic. <laughs> you can sit and look at other things, but it, it's supporting that. Now, to close this off really quickly, 
Um, the number one has been given to us with this energy field that we have. So for this week, it's the number one. And number one is leaders, right? Number one, it's courage, it's inspiration, it's active, and it's creative. So you combine that uh, with the energies that has been offered to us. It's a pretty terrific combination. It's very compatible, very compatible. So kids, devote more time to other people this week. Don't be afraid to praise people around you. Make them feel good. Uh, watch for domineering energy. Try to avoid it if you can. If not, just put a muzzle on them. That's what I firmly believe duct tape is good. Duct tape doesn't fix stupid people, but it can muffle the sound so that we don't have to put up with it. So just be good. Be good. On that note, be good to each other. Use your duct tape sparingly and look at good management skills for yourself, your life, and what other people are doing around you and how do, how do I help this situation be the best that it can be. I would like to take a moment to thank Charlie O'Brien for putting this all up for us. He's the, he's the guy. He's the one that makes all of this possible and I'm so grateful to him. He has us on Spotify, on Apple iTunes, Amazon Music, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. And he gives me the link. I post that on Facebook. And um, you can find that uh, on Facebook. Sometimes just after I post it, I'll put it up there. Or you can just Google it and find it wherever you listen to your podcast. Wherever we I Googled myself the other day and I, st I stunned myself. <laughs> it was kind of scary, actually. So I thank Charlie O'Brien for all that hard work. And even if he's busy, 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 he still gets that done. And I'm, I'm so grateful. And I'm grateful to all of you for taking your time to listen to this. You have a wonderful week. Take advantage of that energy. Make the best of it, kids. If you need a reading for yourself or your dog worked with, 519-726-6699. You can text that or you can call or you can email me at terry, T-E-R-R-I dot coot, C-O-U-T-T-S at gmail.com. And Charlie has put the weekly podcasts up and are archived on terryworld.com. Uh, so you can access that as well. Alrighty, you go have fun. Go, fu go have fun, everybody. And if you need me, you know how to get in touch with me. Bye for now. You've been listening to Insights with Terry Coots. And visit her website, terryworld.com. T-E-R-R-I world.com. And we'll catch you next time.